Are you looking for videos about HVAC? Are you tired of scrolling through videos that you never really seem to get what you're looking for? Maybe you're a technician looking for some information, looking to join the trade, or maybe you're a homeowner that needs a little bit of advice. Either way, Andy's Corner HVAC is your one-stop place for all of that. So I wanna say thank you for watching the videos. I wanna say thank you to all the current and future subscribers out there. I wanna remind everybody to be looking for the books from Andy's Corner HVAC. Now enjoy your video. All right guys, so today I wanna to talk to you about crawl spaces and ductwork, or more specifically, uninsulated ductwork in unconditioned spaces. Now you may have under your home a crawl space or a basement. In my area, it's about 50-50. We have half crawl spaces, half basements. Some basements are full basements. Some are half bas basements with half crawls. Uh, some basements are finished. Some have uh, insulation, drywall, full living quarters, and the whole nine yards in there. I'm talking more about unconditioned spaces today, and specifically crawl spaces. You know, someone told me a long time ago that you should treat a crawl space like a four, foot, four and a half foot tall basement, which really sounded weird at the time, but makes a lot of sense because we want to seal that up just like we would a basement. You know, a crawl space, you know, a lot of people have crawl space vents, they have window access openings and all this kind of stuff. Well, if you treat it, it goes underneath your house, and in most cases, or at least in my area, there's no insulation between the crawl space and the actual living space of the house. It's just a wood floor, then whatever your floor coverings are inside. So at that point, if it was a basement under there, would you open a window in your basement in the summertime or in the wintertime? Uh, so why on earth would you do that to your crawl space? Because it isn't any different, really. If we think about it, it's just a shorter space. So the reason that I do in this video that prompted it to actually do it was the fact that I was talking to a gentleman a while back. He needed new ductwork in his house and he had a crawl space underneath, uh, obviously unconditioned. And I recommended insulated ductwork because I always recommend insulated ductwork in unconditioned spaces. Now there's different types and variations and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to get into that. We're just going to call it all insulated ductwork at this point. Uh, there's a lot of different theories out there on that. Maybe someday we'll do another video on it and I'll give you my thoughts. But let's go with insulated ductwork. He said that he can't put insulated ductwork in. It has to be bare metal. That way his pipes don't freeze in the wintertime. And, you know, his thought may have a little bit of validity to it. Just for the fact that, yes, uninsulated ductwork, you know, bare metal ductwork is going to radiate a lot of heat off of it when that furnace runs. And you're going to lose a lot of heat in the crawl space and it probably will raise the temperature a few degrees. But my question is, why on earth would you waste your utility bill dollars heating your crawl space where you don't live? I mean, do you want to keep the bugs and the spiders warm and comfortable all winter long? What do you care about them? Most time we're trying to kill them. I mean, sorry about you bug activists out there that want to save all the bugs and whatnot, more power to you. In my house, I spray for them and I kill them. I have no intentions of heating them in my crawl space or keeping them warm so they, they live longer and get bigger and all other kinds of stuff. Then it's just harder to step on, in my opinion. Either way, the ductwork in your crawl space is not there to heat your water pipes in the wintertime. Crawl spaces, at least in my area, I know some areas may be a little bit different, but in most areas that I've seen, crawl spaces are usually a few feet below the actual dirt grade outside. So at that point, you're partially underground. So if you're partially underground, once you get down there so far, you have a pretty same temperature all the time. Um, it depends on your area, how deep you actually have to go to hit that 50, 55 degree mark. But for the most part, you get a few feet in the ground, you're going to stay about the same temperature, especially where I'm at. Um, and so at that point, if the crawl space is sealed up, all of the, the vents are closed, the accesses are closed, and the foundation doesn't leak a whole bunch, it's going to probably stay 50 some degrees all on its own. Last I checked, water freezes at 32 degrees. So if we're 50 degrees, we've got several degrees there to work with, so we don't really have to worry about the pipes freezing. Now, if you have a leaky foundation or a, a leaky crawl space, you leave your crawl space vents open in the wintertime, which I do not recommend by any means. I've got another video out there on that one. Um, but if you do leave crawl space vents open, you have cracks in the foundation, you have bricks missing in some of the older brick foundations, things like that, or you leave crawl space uh, access uh, access is open and all that cold air blows in there, yeah, of course it's going to freeze. Number one thing you need to do is seal that crawl space up. At minimum, make sure all the vents are closed, make sure any little cracks in the foundation are sealed up. It's good for the house anyways to do that. And then the, the entrances that you go into, close them up. I see so many houses out there that if you happen to see the backyard, you see the crawl space wide open. 
for one, that leaves it open for animals and, and critters of all sorts to get in there and live, which nobody wants that. Two, it does nothing but let cold air in. And that cold air comes blowing through. You know, around here in the wintertime, by the time we hit January, that cold north wind is pretty damn cold. And I sure don't want it blown into my crawl space. It's going to make my furnace run longer. It's going to make my house feel cold. The floors are going to be cold. Whole nine yards. So we need to make sure, at minimum, we are sealed up to keep the air leaks out. The other thing that I recommend is anything at least above the dirt grade to be spray foamed. Uh, to seal that off. It's a moisture barrier, insulation barrier, whole nine yards. Uh, you can look up all the specs on what the R value is on closed cell versus uh, open cell and all that kind of stuff. Either way, it needs to be insulated. Do the box seals as well because that two by six or two by eight or whatever it is in your house that's sitting there doesn't really provide much of any R value. That's one of the big mistakes that or misunderstandings that people have on R values. You know, just a normal wooden board does not actually provide much of any R value whatsoever. People also assume with their floors, they're like, well, I've got carpet down, so I mean, it's insulated. No, it's not. Carpet doesn't actually provide much of a, of a barrier whatsoever. And there's definitely no vapor barrier there. So, you know, if that cold wind comes blowing through there, yeah, it's your floors are going to be cold. And it's going to co let cold air into your house. It's going to cause your furnace to run, and your utility bill is going to be higher. So at that point... If you insulate everything, you seal it really well, hey, you're good to go. Maybe you're trying to tell me that you have water in your crawl space so that you have to open it up. I've heard this wife's tale a thousand times plus that I have to open my crawl space vents and open and air everything out in the summertime and then close it back up in the wintertime. Summertime, they don't need to be open either. If you have moisture in there, you need to figure out how to get the moisture out. You use sump pumps. They have all kinds of systems now uh, where they do um, uh, perimeter drainage they do all kinds of things either way that crawl space floor should be sealed up just the same i know in a lot of cases it's dirt or it's rock a lot of times they use pea gravel sand you know whatever it may be it may just be clumps of dirt whatever it is it needs to be covered you need a vapor barrier on it to keep the humidity humidity and moisture down because that humidity and moisture will come up through your floor and will cause high humidity in the summertime and sometimes potentially in the winter time as well Either way, you don't want any of that cold earth or the moisture or anything else coming up. So, you know, if you put a vapor barrier down, you insulate the walls like you should, and you have a sump pump, at least one sump pump in there to make sure any water that does get in there is able to be taken away, your crawl space is going to be doing just fine. They have full encapsulation of crawl spaces nowadays. If I had a crawl space, that's totally what I would do. Uh, there's a spe special type of material that they use. They go across the, the ground. They go up the walls. There is perimeter drainage so everything can drain away. There's sealed sump pumps that pump it all out, all this kind of stuff. Now, that's really what we need to do. Like I said, at minimum, seal it up to stop the air gaps or the air leaks from all the gaps and things like that that you have. That is a minimum. Vapor barrier, absolutely. If you're willing to crawl in your crawl space, you can do it yourself. There's a lot of different um, hardware stores, farm stores, whatever, that sell Visqueen and all different types of plastic. I would get a thicker mill and a fairly high grade plastic because if you do have people crawling around down there, you don't want them ripping it up and tearing it up and all that kind of stuff. But just make sure everything is covered on the ground and then they let that plastic come up the wall some. I would recommend trying to seal it a little bit. Now, I am not a crawl, sp a crawl space expert. I have been in a lot of them, but I am not a crawl space ex expert. If you want somebody to do this for you, there's all kinds of companies out there that do this now. Um, and there, there's all of them nationwide. They're all over the place. So they will come in, give you a quote, do all this for you. Um, but like I said, at minimum, vapor barrier and stop the air leaks. Box seals should always be, be insulated. But like I said, one step at a time if that's what you have to do and you yeah, want to do it yourself. Either way, back to the idea of the ductwork in there. That ductwork is not there to heat your crawl space. Like I said before, we're not trying to heat the bugs and the spiders and all that kind of stuff. I don't care how comfortable the spiders are in my crawl space. Don't care whatsoever. So, you know, the idea of using that ductwork to heat it is horribly inefficient. Why would you pump dollars into your utility bill to heat the crawl space just the same as you're heating the house? You know, that's a horrible idea. Ideally, you should have an HVAC contractor come out and inspect your ductwork under there once in a while, especially if it is in a crawl space. Nobody probably sees it very often. I mean, the average person doesn't go in their crawl space very often. So if nobody sees it, if something comes loose, comes apart, maybe poorly installed, whatever it may be, 
somebody ought to be down there taking a look at it to make sure it's okay. So always schedule a visit once in a while to have somebody take a look at that. You should be doing yearly or, or biannual maintenance on your actual HVAC system anyways. So many people forget that the ductwork is part of that system. The system, your HVAC system is not just the furnace, air conditioner, thermostat. That's what you can see. The rest of it a lot of times is in the attic, it's under the house, maybe it's sealed behind drywall, whatever. It's your ductwork. You know, that system or that equipment that you have generating the BTUs either in cooling or heating does absolutely no good if we can't distribute that air throughout the house. I've got some other things out there on static pressure and ductwork and all that kind of stuff. You can check those out and see some more uh, information on that specifically, but the idea is that ductwork is part of the system as well. So make sure it's doing good. The other thing is by the time that heat is generated from your furnace and goes all the way through the duct, we don't want to lose any of that temperature or any of those BTUs that we are uh, generating from that furnace. We don't want to lose any of those before it gets up into the house. We want every BTU that we generate from the furnace to make it into the actual livable space. There is no reason to lose any of those BTUs. You know, I look at it as a BTU is a dollar. Every time I lose one, somebody's taking a dollar away from me. I don't like that, especially if I start losing a lot of BTUs. So, you know, that idea is those BTUs that are being generated, we want them in the space. We want to feel the comfort that we are spending the money on to generate. So that's what I, I think about ductwork in unconditioned spaces. You know, in my opinion, it needs to be insulated. What type of insulation you use, if you use flex duct, duct bore, wrap metal duct work, uh, they make uh, metal liners now. Um, that can go on the outside or metal pipe coverings, all kinds of things like that that they do uh, to get that stuff insulated to try to keep some of those BTUs within your system and within your house. It has no reason to heat your crawl space. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Uh, you know how to do it um, if you have anything whatsoever. Otherwise, thank you for watching and God bless.